Well, here we are. Another year has passed. 2019 has come to an end. And I always love to do these recap videos because sometimes you don't really know how far you've come until you take a look back. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna take a look back and look at some of the highlights of 2019. So after my exhausting Light Up The World tour in Europe uh, from November onwards, I retreated to a place in Indonesia to find a cheap accommodation where I could sit down and edit all of my footage. But because it was Veganuary back in the UK, I received a lot of emails from TV shows wanting me on their show, This Morning Show, um, Pierce Morgan's show, Good Morning Britain. I, I actually got a call from uh, Jeremy Vine. Is it wrong if I don't bear in mind what happened to the animal that created it? Is that the problem here? Willful ignorance is kind of what drives these industries and it's what they rely on. So um, I would be more conscious of what you're consuming and the animal that lost their life for that uh, sausage roll and just go for the vegan stuff. There's plenty of vegan options in the UK now. It's absolutely blowing up over there. It's great. So I thought to myself, well, I've just done this exhausting Europe tour, but I think it's more important for me to be in the UK. I decided to reply back to these emails and say, I'll be in the UK now. I uh, specifically wanted to have another row with Pierce Morgan, so I flew, flew back over. Now, I didn't receive a reply from Good Morning Britain. They didn't get me back on the show. So I was like, well, you know, Pierce Morgan's being pretty mouthy. They won't get me back on the show to debate with him. So what I'll do instead is start a campaign against Pierce Morgan. You think a bunch of vegans and their, and their howling music are gonna bother me? I don't care, I don't care. You hypocrites, I'm coming for you. So Pierce Morgan. What are you defending? So I got some help from one of my comrades in the movement, Chris Hines, and we set out on a little journey to expose Pierce Morgan and show exactly what he is defending when he opposes veganism. We went to dairy farms, gas chambers, pig farms. The argument about milk is murder is a fatuous one. This baby here, chucked in the bin like a piece of garbage, this beautiful angel. I'm in the UK right now. This is what you defend when you oppose veganism. This is exactly what you defend. This. This is a British farm, okay? This is where the majority of pork is coming from. Places like this, exactly like this. I'm here in the UK now. You can bring me on the show right now to talk about what we're seeing in here. The biggest mass murder in British pr in food production history is insects murdered to make bread. You ask yourself, Pierce Morgan, is there a moral distinction between this place here and vegans eating bread. So the idea was to leverage off of the controversy Pierce Morgan was creating towards veganism and do a little bit of advocacy of my own. Set up a website called What Is Pierce Defending? Now in this time, as soon as I arrived back to the UK, I was in a uh, radio debate, heated radio debate with a BBC presenter. Are who, you opposed who, to animal cruelty? Am I opposed to animal cruelty? Yes, yeah. I'm not opposed so to why, animals. So for what reason, if they don't have moral value? If I, because I don't want to torture something. So why, do, why, don't, you I don't, to, why don't you want to torture animals if they don't have moral value? Why do I want to torture? I didn't say so, animals so, don't have any so moral value. So if it's value. wrong to torture an animal, why, is it wrong, why isn't it wrong to shoot them in the head? I then was involved with a meat is murder debate at Cambridge University, which was quite interesting. What is that difference? What is the morally significant difference between an infant baby and a lamb, like you suggested, that gives us justification to stab a lamb in the neck with a knife, take their life from them, and for some reason, killing that baby child, that human child, would be considered murder. Chris Hines was able to hook up a very controversial slaughterhouse tour, which uh, ended up getting a lot of views. How far does the bolt come out? It comes out to about here, basically. You can show on my head, that's okay. So it would be about here. Okay, so the top of the forehead. Yeah, well it would go from, from ear, to eye, and then ear to eye. So if you were cows, you would like have ears. So it has to go to pierce through their brain. It was one of the more interesting interviews I've been a part of, and she took me as a, through a tour through her slaughterhouse. Very, very bizarre that was for me. So whilst campaigning against Pierce Morgan, I released, uh, was releasing the Europe tour videos. Uh, there was some Daily Mail controversy that stirred up in Australia after I responded to dairy farmers who were upset that they were losing their dairy farms. We've had to make the decision that it's it for us. They rely on their practices being kept secret. They like to perpetuate this humane dairy fairy tale, and that's all coming to the light now. It's sort of, you're, you're feeling that um, dairy farmers 
who are unable to or find enough to, to work in the industry anymore should sort of just get over it and, and find a new job? Is that sort of how, how you look at it? <laughs> well, not that simply. But I think it would be why I I don't think they should just get over it and get a new job. I mean, I didn't say it that bluntly in the video. I think I gave a little bit more context than that. There are victims who are suffering more than the dairy farmers, and those are the cows and the calves who are separated and uh, sent to slaughterhouses and killed. I then completed the eight-part video campaign against Pierce Morgan, and Channel 7 uh, from Australia, the Sunday night show, uh, contacted me to film a piece for them. So we went for about, I think, two or three days. Something like this gets out to enough people, um, good, compassionate human beings, wouldn't want to be funding a place like this. And, uh, and we could get millions of people to be on board with this, and we have. The only way a Holocaust can take place is for good people to stand by and do nothing. And after these exhausting few months of campaigning, I retreated back to my editing space to try to complete the tons of editing for the rest of the Europe tour. Now, whilst I was there in Indonesia, I was contacted by the Today Show, who flew me out to be on their show to discuss my advocacy, to, to discuss some of the more controversial things I said. And I had quite a successful, in my view, interview with the two ladies on the Today Show. There's obviously absolutely nothing wrong with being a vegan. Can you understand, though, but that perhaps some people find your approach too extreme? Or do you feel you have to take such measures to get your message heard? Is being a vegan who is against the exploitation and harm of animals extreme, or are slaughterhouses extreme, are gas chambers extreme, or are macerating one day old uh, male chicks in the egg industries in a big blender on their first day of life, little baby chicks, is that extreme? Mm, well, it, it gives you a lot to think about. And obviously this reached millions of people, not only in Australia, but across the world via social media. So another highlight for me was releasing the Vienna Slaughterhouse footage. This happened in November the year prior, but I only released the footage in 2019. We sat there with these pigs for hours and then uh, followed them into the kill floor. Right. And we watched these innocent animals be hung up and murdered right in front of our eyes. Very distressing. It was quite a traumatic experience, but the video reached hundreds of thousands of people across my platforms and hopefully had a positive impact. It was one of the, the most viewed videos of that Europe tour. So thank you to Lena for organizing that. So shortly after that, I got news that the Sunday night show were about to release the piece that we filmed for. Let's have a watch of this together and see how biased it is, hey? Now this turned out to be the most shocking, biased, garbage hit piece on veganism I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never seen such malicious editing. Powerless, as close to 150 vegan activists stormed his property. Powerless. The use of like horror type music while activists were invading farms. They, they played it out that activists were the villains. Did they show what the what the activists actually found there. They were shot, humanely. Yeah. How do you humanely yeah. shoot a cow? They completely omitted the fact that this farm had dead cows who'd been shot in the head with a rifle decomposing on the farm. It was a complete hit piece. It was so suspicious. And later on, we found out that Channel 7 is privately owned by a billionaire beef tycoon named Kerry Stokes. It's kind of making sense now, this crazy media bias story coming out of this guy's the chairman of that, that media company. Now, now, it's not even a conspiracy. This is just follow the money. Follow the money. So it all came together. Channel 7 is privately owned by a beef mogul. I then began a crusade of videos exposing Channel 7 and their lies, calling the producers, exposing Kerry Stokes and their connections. Um. It is the most cringiest piece I've ever seen and it's, it's, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing journalism. With the help of a good friend Joanne from Australia and this took up a lot of my time. Like these are big players man. These are big players, eh? Multi-billionaire meat industry media moguls. I'm telling you mate, if anything happens to Joey, you know where, well, you know why, you know why. But seriously, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shut up about it. I'm going to keep talking about it. Like, so shortly after this, I began filming with the BBC on a show called Veganville. Now I was very nervous to start filming this Veganville thing after being so badly messed over by channel seven. I expressed my nerves. I was not comfortable. 
but I thought I'd take a risk. They promised me they would be unbiased, that they were not going to be malicious in the editing, they were gonna be truthful. I had more trust in them than I did with Channel 7. I did three and a half weeks filming with Veganville. It turned out to be a very character building experience for me. The hardest part was leaving my platforms for three and a half weeks. I'm very dedicated to spreading the vegan message on my platforms and to leave my platforms is like leaving my baby. To contribute to a project that I, I had no editing power with, but it turned out for me to be a risk that was worth it. Now, after this three and a half weeks of filming with Veganville was done, I was absolutely exhausted. And I spent a bit of time on self-care. So uh, this was around the time my six year sober video came out. It's been a journey. I'm not gonna say staying sober for six years has been easy. There's been times where I've wanted to drink alcohol. There's been times when I've just wanted to let loose and party. But I think when you have something to wake up for every day, a purpose in your life, and you've you really got to make that decision, you really got to ask yourself, has the actions you've been taking in your life up to this point led you to the point where you want to be at? Um, so this was my sixth year of being sober. I had a bit of reflection. I've been working with a therapist for my PTSD, and we made big breakthroughs in my PTSD. I really feel like I put to bed a lot of my demons, went straight to the source of my trauma, and we released a lot of it and I've felt so good ever since. So therapy for me was amazing and I really love my therapist. Thank you so much with all my heart. My mental health has gotten magnitudes better than where it was. This year I also focused a lot on my physical training, getting in shape, being a good advocate in terms of you know looking my best. Now I've been having a bit of a, a break, a bit of a self-care break and I've been focusing on um, myself and get, getting my mental state nice and clear. I've quit caffeine, I've been training every single day. So my mental health has improved vastly through therapy. My physical shape has improved a lot. I really have started to you know, show how you can be fit, uh, build muscle, and also uh, you know, later on in the year, I was showing how you can you know, do athletic feats like run marathons without training ultra marathons, you know, with no running training, just doing crazy stuff like that. And that will continue, that will continue. So I'm adding another level to my advocacy when it comes to the, my physical shape and athleticism. So after releasing the last of my Europe tour, which took six months for me to get up, I mean, there's a lot of editing. That last video, you know, it really shows the highs and lows of the tour. Really tough, like this is a tough tour. I don't think this is sustainable, because I don't think I think this is some type of sustainable activism. But thank you so much to Abdullah and everyone who helped organize that tour. Abdullah was my sidekick cameraman. He went through it all with me. He realizes now how hard some of these tours can be. I released the last video of my tour, which was a real highlight of the year. I really wanted to get that last video up. And I needed a new beginning, a new beginning. What was I gonna do? I was gonna get a team together and start campaigning in London. So I got a team together, I got a camera guy, some editors and uh, an assistant. I got together in London, started campaigning and setting up tables, uh, doing some stunts. Permission to start this up here? Oh, obviously I have. Obviously you have. <laughs> I can't I can't do this discussion with people here. Not here you can't. Okay. You, you, you... Where's the nearest public land? Public land will be outside the gate. Well, it looks like we did the last five minutes before, before being kicked out, so. Um, really pumping social media. Smashing social media's face in with vegan content. Going hard, going hard. I was putting in the work, hours and hours and hours. And grew my social media platforms. We reached over 100,000 on each of the platforms this year. It was great. My platform has ticked over 100 thousand subscribers <laughs> it was a real milestone for me I come from humble beginnings had a little iPhone 5 when I first started you know and <laughs> so it really meant a lot to to reach these milestones I put in a lot of work on my platforms my heart and soul and I talk about very controversial issues on my channel I really do hit the hardcore topics on on my channel about the gas chambers and the rapes in the dairy industry I don't I don't skip out the animal message. You know, it was just, it was just really heartwarming to reach, you know, this milestone on my channel. Amassed millions of views this year on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Tens of millions of views, reaching tens of millions of people on, on uh, social media, as well as actual media, reaching tens of, literally tens of millions of people. So 
had a really big impact this year. And you just cannot really measure the impact you're having on people. I mean, I get emails and messages all the time, but there's people that don't email and message you and they go on to impact other people. And so thank you so much for those who have shared my videos, watched my videos and sent me messages that, you know, I've influenced you or my videos have inspired you. This has just been an amazing year. So rounding up, this year has been massive. I mean, I've transformed my, my body, my mind, my emotional, mental state, of my character, I feel so much wiser than when I first started. I wanna be more systematic now with my activism. I've never been planned. I've always just, like, you, you would think this is crazy, but the way I do things, I just go for it. I just I just get a cameraman and just start filming and I just take, take a flight, go to a country, plan a bunch of um, activism and just go hard, go as hard as I can. But I wanna be more systematic. I wanna be um, more organized and you know, I want to develop as an activist and a public speaker and a fitness and health advocate. I want to uh, be more researched and set more goals and be more systematic. And now that I've got, I'm under new management now, and I'm really hoping to step it up a notch and be a more professional advocate and really take this to another level seriously. You know, I don't want to be caught slacking or become complacent. That's just not me. That would eat me alive inside. So I want to keep stepping it up and keep pushing and pushing and pushing with this. And I, I hope that that inspires you too to keep pushing yourself. You know, don't ever become complacent. That's that's how depression starts. It will just eat you alive inside. If you've got a purpose in your heart, you need to get out there and you need to take the action necessary to get it done and keep progressing. And just because you've got an achievement, just because one of your videos got a million views, don't stop there. Don't rest on your laurels. That's what you, you used to do. I wanna see what you're doing now and what are you continuing to do in the future to make an impact and to live your life of purpose. What is that for you? What values do you possess? Are you living in alignment with your values? Are you sitting there becoming complacent and becoming comfortable? Don't ever become comfortable in life. Okay, so let's keep pushing ourselves and that's what I wanna do. But now the end of this video, I'm gonna say thank you. Thank you first and foremost to my donors and Patreons who have been with me, uh, supporting me financially. I couldn't, you know, it's just, you need finances to be able to reach lots of people. It's just the way it is. And thank you so much to those of you who do that for me. This this year would not have been possible without you all. And like, since I've started Patreon, I've been able to reach millions of more people, millions of more people, literally. So it's been an amazing, uh, gift really has been a gift and I also want to thank everyone who's worked with me in various ways I know there's a lot of infighting in the movement and we don't all have to be friends but the fact that people cooperate with me and you know have really helped me out whether it's been sending me research or you know I've rang for help and you, or you've helped film with me or you've been there to help me edit or you've helped me do do some captions here and there you've helped take the weight off in some way you've helped me organize something or you know you've given me a tip or you've left a comment or you've you've shared some of my videos whatever it is whoever has helped me in those ways just the support in the comment section means so much to me advice that you've given me whatever it is uh, my therapist things like that just Whoever has helped me, I want to send a big heartwarming thank you to you all. And I really cannot describe to you what it means to have people that have, are, are there to support me in whatever way to help me get this message out there. Because I really am dedicated and I really want to leave a lasting mark on the world and in the hearts of, of people. And I really do want to see animals liberated. So here's to an amazing, 2019 and an even more amazing 2020. Let's all step it up. Let's not become complacent. Let's all keep grinding, work hard, stay committed, live in alignment with your purpose, make an impact. Think of the animal suffering. Think what they're going through and what would you want if you were in their position? Do you want someone like me fighting for you? Do you want to be the person to fight for these animals? Then get out there and do it. One foot in front of the other, keep moving forward and arm in arm, Together as a movement, we can change the world. Peace.